Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I don't know about you, but February was kind of a rough month, and March wasn't that much better. I was at a meeting in March with the Archbishop of the Diocese, and he said to the people that were gathered, he said, by the way, he said, I've been telling everyone, don't make any decisions in February. February is a terrible month. So there you have it from uh, the man himself. Apparently, February was a rough month for many people. And so what a joy, finally, to have a beautiful day outside to see people starting to get on their bikes again, to see people opening up their uh, restaurant front uh, porches, uh, to see a few birds around and some last bits of snow finally melting away, to feel and realize that you didn't even need to wear a coat today, not even a jacket. I went out without a jacket today for the first time in weeks. And when I stopped in today at the church, there were uh, the volunteers that were uh, busy getting ready for tonight's service and for tomorrow morning, and the place smelled like lilies. And it's, it was beautiful, and it was light, and people were humming along doing their different uh, chores. And I thought to myself, it's really hard to be solemn and glum and in that Holy Saturday place when there is so much joy beginning to break in. When there is so much joy beginning to break in. Like new shoots coming out of, of dry, cold ground. Those little bits of life just can't be kept down. For example... I heard this story uh, yesterday. It's a beautiful story. There was uh, a woman who was pregnant, and uh, she was told by her doctor that her child would not survive the birth. Uh, he had uh, spinal diffida, I think it is. And uh, so they had advised her that perhaps she should consider an abortion or something like that, because the child wouldn't make it. However, this woman was an obstetrics nurse. And as an obstetrics nurse, she happened to know about this doctor who could do extraordinary forms of surgery. So she called him, and she consented to be part of a, of a groundbreaking and highly experimental form of surgery where what they basically did is they removed her uterus from her body, did surgery on the baby inside of it, and then put it back. Now, that's extraordinary enough and just mind-boggling to imagine. But now imagine this, and there is a photograph to prove this happened. While the doctor was doing surgery on the baby inside the womb, this little hand reached out of the cut, the incision, and grasped his finger. And when that happened, he stopped the doctor. And everybody stopped. And there was a hush, broken only by a shutter going off on a camera. And this doctor said he had never really considered, perhaps, the full implications of what he was doing. He had never really considered that this baby was actually a person in there not just you know, a, an organism that he was operating on, but was actually a person in there. And this person had grasped him by the finger and squeezed. That's new life. That's resurrection. Needless to say, baby and mother are doing well. The baby was delivered and is doing well, and now the story is going all over the internet you know, in this viral kind of way because it's such a beautiful story. It says something to us about the persistence of life, that even those dead, dry bones that Ezekiel talks about, even those can experience new life when the breath of God comes across them. So this Easter season, as we celebrate with the church throughout the world, as we light candles and have ham, or whatever your tradition is, and as we begin to enjoy the spring weather in Ontario and feel that kind of surge of new life that comes when we realize that we don't have to be stuck indoors all the time, all of that is evidence of God's new life coming in. And I want you to embrace it as fully as you possibly can. Say yes to the life that God offers you. Yes, yes, yes. Because the hope of Easter is not just the hope that we carry about something that's going to happen after we die. Yes, yes, wonderful things we believe as part of our Christian hope will happen to us when we die and go to be with our Lord. But it's also about something profound that happens to our now to the now, now, now of this moment, when we say yes, yes, yes to the things that God is doing, to that new breath that comes, and like that baby's hand grasps us by the finger and won't let go. That is our Easter hope. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.